How are you? Welcome to Critical Moves of Telesur. Once again, the countries of the Caribbean sat at the table. What were the topics that they spoke about? How do they plan on facing the upcoming events? Does the imperialism have a chance in their in their in their will to conquer this area? This is what we're going to be analyzing today. Let's begin. Let's listen. Uh, what were the topics that uh, that the meeting, the 31st meeting, uh, was about? When we left Castres last year, we had no ideas that we had to uh, confront the a pandemic with like the one we have with coronavirus. We didn't know that we could uh, we could trust on our regional actions uh, to confront this virus. To analyze the example of Canada is necessary for CARICOM. We need to uh, go forward with Canada and find solutions for security and education, as well as uh, to find resources to mitigate the effects of of. Oh, global warming. It's necessary to integrate each other. Our agenda illustrates the, how far uh, we as a community should go to consolidate even more our integration and to have a strong position in an ever-growing complex world that is ever-changing. To give a strong, strong steps is necessary to have a common market, safeguard our uh, sovereignty, improve our technological capacity, protect our health and security of our people. This is by in increasing the, our capacity of jails. We have to uh, we have to build a resilient society that will have many talents, skills, and resources, both private and and public. The young people and all of the society needs need cooperation of our friends from the international community. All of these efforts will uh, will be used to to benefit everybody and build resilience that will allow us to share the current challenges particularly the threat of climate change. Let's see our, our traditional map. Let's see what is this, uh, this, uh, this organism of integration. What is it about? CARICOM. Unit, Caribbean Unity Influence Group. This organization is multilateral. It was founded in 1973 in Trinidad and Tobago under an agreement that uh, replaced the, the Caribbean Association of, of Free Change that was created in 1965. Its permanent headquarter is in Georgetown, Guyana. It is integrated by over a dozen of, of, of people. And uh, with such diversity in language and and uh, tradition, this makes a wide myriad of members. Who are the members? Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Kitts and the Nevilles, St. Lucia, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, the Virgin Islands, and Caicos are associated. And as observers, we have Aruba, Colombia, Curaçao, Mexico, Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, St. Martin, and Venezuela. Bahamas are part of the community, but not of the market. And Cuba is part of CARICOM. Uh, it goes back to 1972, and its main objective is to break the isolation that uh, that uh, this that some companies have with them. There is a common market was signed by the chiefs of state in 2001 in the context of the of a conference of a yearly conference that was held in Curaçao. Among the most important objectives would be to develop sustainability, uh, help the vulnerabilities, both economic and environmental, uh, create a common front 
to con to confront uh, the blockade and co imperial uh, coercion, defend the regional unity and uh, of the Caribbean as a zone of peace, and interact with other or international organisms to constitute a common a common interest is important because they are going to declare the peace as a zone of peace what are the topics that are going to go forth in this uh, in this table let's review it the high representatives of the 15 member states have set the objectives for this year that will allow them to confront the challenges they, they have seen. During 18 and 19 of this month, the countries of the Caribbean have asked for a bigger number of investment. They have discussed uh, about violence, delinquency, and they think that with a coordinated work, it would be it would it would be better it would be easier to curb uh, drug trafficking. It is important to also speak about having uh, troops to confront uh, foreign troops who want to attack our people. There are also um, climate change victims. And during the first day of work, it has been very easily seen that uh, we will be seeing both of these organizations in, in, the, up, in the next uh, organization. The work plan also includes uh, a communication with Africa, among other aspects that used to be the, the end of this organization. We have to go over the so-called blacklists. And let's begin with the revision of digital websites. Let's see what the agenda says. Uh, CARICOM is confronting the coronavirus. The general secretary of this, uh, this organism, who's Irwin LaRocque, has, uh, has praised the mechanism of response to this sanitary emergency and how they are supposed to be free from from any uh, from any of these virus coming in the diplomatic of a uh, Republic Dominican Republic has said that this cooperation between Caribbean organizations and uh, this would be another uh, another example of what we have to confront with the third world there is also a meeting with uh, with the chiefs of state with CARFA and the Organization for um, Emergencies of this region. Let's see what uh, the Cuban the Cuban diary says. The Caribbean has asked for a larger uh, integration to face the global threats. The Caribbean organization has said that that they're going to do the integration so they can fulfill the bloc's uh, objectives. And there is also a news press of uh, supporting Cuba with uh, against what is the blockade that the United States has imposed. And they also condemn the use of uh, laws beyond their own territory. The government and a high representative of these of this meeting maintained a firm and dignified action that has a that has always been the case of the Caribbean brothers. Our foreign affairs minister Bruno Parriza has uh, has agreed and has thanked about their their big hats and other products that come from Mexico. And uh, of course, for years. They contributed for the welfare of, of your country. Another one, Prensa Latina, it says, Administrative tri Tribunal takes over its functions. In February 17, this tribunal took over and uh, started to use its actions to be um, a regional forum for um, liberal disputes. According to this, Ms. Martinez had uh, had swore to be the chief uh, 
the chief delegate. The CIT will give the members of the, of the Secretariat and their organizations mechanisms to avoid uh, problems in the region. Those who were called on will have their will have to wait because what they want is to have an equitable distribution and uh, uphold women's rights. This is our first pause, but let's begin with our questions so you can participate with us. Give us your opinion. Here it is. What are the geostrategic interests that the empire has in terms of the CARICOM country? Is it in the benefit of the United States to have uh, interference of uh, other affairs? Give us your opinion. Participate. With 47 years of being founded, the Caribbean community has uh, new challenges and that are common to all of those countries. Let's see what they are. Made out of 15 members and two uh, associates, their objectives are to elevate the level of life of the people of the region, to do away with the unemployment and uh, foster economic development. Likewise, their, one of the objectives is to foment uh, economic relationship with third countries based on the principles of regional integration. The member countries of CARICOM has fostered uh, relationships of other countries that are not part of the bloc. For example, the ones of Cuba that are based on the vulnerabilities of other countries and um, especially in the, in the diplomatic front. CARICOM ratifies that the Caribbean is part of America. For more than 50 years, there has been uh, 50, 50 organizations, study educations in Cuba, that have uh, invited many people from all of America. Now, more than a thousand, um, a thousand doctors are spread all around America and offer their services. The CARICOM has expressed itself in uh, in forums. Likewise, it, it will be asked to respect each country. Another another topic is the fight against terrorism. Let's begin the first part of the analysis. This time we have from Mexico. And he is a he is the owner of the of some of the accessories. Let's start with Nayar to reflect precisely on this tie that has been kept during these years. Caricom with countries that are not uh, full members of this organization. What has this allowed? to the organism. And what they're going to do is they're going to col collaborate. For example, the case of Cuba, as you well said a minute ago, Carib <laughs> Cuba is a very important um, element in the Caribbean. And uh, this 
And having associated members such as Cuba allow CARICOM to understand, to better understand the, the reality. Thank you. Uh, please stay on, online. We have lost your image, but now we're going to try to uh, reconnect in in the United States. Well, said here, we have reflected with countries that are not members of uh, CARICOM. But anyways, there are uh, some complementarity. But another of the topics that were part of the agenda, especially the diplomatic one of CARICOM, is the topic about Venezuela. This is has a single section among um, the United Nations, OAS, in defense of the sovereignty of Venezuela. And the non-interference, which is what is proclaimed. Yes, well, in fact, they have also tried to, to go to the country and um, and enjoy a little bit of, of what they have. And in many aspects that this multilateral organization has posed, uh, what CARICOM does is it, it basically faces everything in a block. However, uh, to this uh, union, to this unions like the ones in the United States and uh, in Canada, most of the states of CARICOM could aim to the non-interference and to respect the political system of each one. This clashes with the interventionist uh, policies of the United States, and in this sense, the United States have done has have done a lot of effort since some years ago. We can say from the 90s when there was an invasion of the United States in Grenada. They offered in exchange to go away. They, went, they would go away from the international conservation. And this was the initiative of the Caribbean uh, beach, but this was not happening. Once again, Abelia is uh, breaking the law of Carico. And this is the elite of some countries. And what they've done is that they have come with a group of Lima, of CARICOM, someday it will be known because and that but never been seen how a small country is going to confront and what they're trying to do is to the United States will try to bend their will can you speak about this last part because it's very interesting that have given up of 80 percent, Eddie Rodriguez, and they profess uh, more, especially the countries of Carico, and they are so clean to the sovereignty. They heard everything, and, and now they're speaking of the res mutual respect in terms of uh, how they take their, their decisions. How do you apply this? And why do we think that there's a Caribbean that joins us? Well, CARICOM has many definitions. And the, the question was, who was the first country who came into this area? Well, we can say that the majority of cases, the, most of the islands were Spanish, but then they, went, they were given to Spain, to France, to England. And uh, now what they do is they have like a poster 
And it looks like if it was a calling for a war. The similar, the similar conditions are there. De forma similar, y el lamentable, la, lamentable herencia del and the unforgivable, africano, the unforgivable, configurando una identidad y una forma de ser caribe, hace que más allá del idioma, mantengamos. Uh, and I think among all of the countries of the Caribbean, we must construct an identity that must be based on a common culture, common alphabets, and uh, to do away. Well, thank you very much, and we have lost our com communication with Nayar Lopez. He was uh, joining us from the beginning. Bien acaba de explicar Sergio que tiene sentimientos comunes con en este These countries have a, a common interest like the ones that the countries in the Caribbean de que haya ciertas barreras idiomáticas. Hay un sentimiento común. There is a sentiment. Sumar la larga historia de And we could also add the víctimas estas islas y también And also Venezuela que fue colonia de España o me equivoco. As I was telling the audience, we lost the, the communication. Well, of course, that's what I was saying, that there is elements of indígena. Let's not forget the, all of the Indian blood they come from. De uh, and here we have um, cultural, religioso, eh, entre, entre tres razas distintas que confluyen este, en este pedazo, pequeño pedazo. With this, uh, de, de with all these a few countries who compete, bearing in mind that the territories are very small, when well, it's basically de, enough. De azúcar, the, these countries survive off the production of sugarcane. Que son las que nos, nos acercan hoy. Que that, the, that those are the ones who, who call me in later, and there's a que no es necesariamente geográfica porque incluye el norte de Brasil e incluso el sur de Estados Unidos and the south of the United States. De manera que 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 el, el Caribe tiene varias definiciones y en función de esas definiciones. In fact, with all of these the reactions that are caused by the by the interests of each country. However, this configures the composition of the Caribbean. Sorry, can you please repeat? Well, uh, what you just explained has been building up what the what we call the geopolitics of the Caribbean. Yes, precisely. There is a geopolitics of the Caribbean of interest because what they say, the South, the United States, is also the Caribbean. They have a geopolitical interest of uh, to impose the, the exit. So in CARICOM, what is interesting? Then have, these countries have established a horizontal relationship with the Caribbean countries. There is not a interest of a leading or being the biggest one. And they're just a... Uh, Construir algo que tú dijiste al comienzo de, 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 esta, de esta conversación. Que And fue I don't know, maybe you could what you just said that was to repeat the complementarity. Lo cual es ventajoso en términos económicos, en términos políticos para todos los países ribereños del Caribe. So if we think about it, it this happens the same thing to all of the people who live near the coast. Okay, we have Nayar once again. And I would like to reflect with you, Nayar, something that... Uh, and how was the United States did never find out about this? En ese, en ese intento de Estados Unidos de sumarse and what, a what the United States is trying to do is to add de, o de avalar sus planes injerencistas para ser más preciso pero but, um, no ha podido romper el bloque de la CARICOM y esto no es nuevo Nayar 
Usted recordará, por ejemplo, que en ocasión de una de las cumbres de las Américas, el hoy ex And we must recall that the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, had a tour uh, through the Caribbean countries. He met with the CARICOM authorities. And he was trying to convince that uh, Petrocaribe venezolana de apoyo en el desde el punto de vista de los hidrocarburos, no era la que uh, that they had taken was not the best one. So it was important to find allies in the United States and therefore do things right. Sí, por supuesto. Eh, sin duda, los intentos que hizo en su momento Obama y que de alguna forma también ha generado Trump en and, um, su periodo, eh, buscan eh, la división ¿no? en, en el área del CARICOM. So you, where do we have to address any any complaints to the headquarters of CARICOM? Finalmente, regional, es decir, buscar la disolución y el quiebre de los. And uh, for example, can we ask for? Para controlar hegemónicamente aquellos que tienen un precio. And this is, for example, those who give you a, a price and it gives you another price, and normally it goes up en inversión a cambio de su incondicionalidad política. Eso lo hemos visto, por ejemplo, en We la have seen en this OEA, ¿no? in the OAS. Never go out on a, such a terrible weather. So all of the countries that are part of CARICOM have played a pivotal role. I'm so glad that, uh, that we are just about around the corner of the Secretary General of USAID. What role could you play? Well, it's it's uh, very important because they have three three votes in the OAS, and regardless of the economic differences, uh, space differences, like five years, uh, a dealer. I think it's determining. And uh, what we did was we were looking for him um, as the governor of this of this first attempt. And of course, what we're trying to do is to have a, a vision. I think that the countries that are part of CARICOM and in general, all of them, our new, our new young. Okay, to close this part of the interview, let me go back with you. It would be very interesting to reflect on the ties that uh, that CARICOM has had with other regional entities, so they won't be seen as an isolated organism. And we're going to leave the OAS. But uh, those those organisms who who want to have Latin America as a peace zone do do appreciate this. Sure, we must recall that it was Jose Martí who spoke about our America and the great. Um, the great richness of what everyone does. And he said that everything from the Rio Grande down should be considered the same. Martí, José Martí, almost at the end of the, of the century, was able to see something that Bolívar was not able to see, which was to see, to speak about Bolívar. And, um, make him uh, think everything that they received. And all of these countries that had been formerly colonies of, uh, colonies of, of European countries. So the, what Martí did is fundamental because we can see the integrity that is uh, done in the CELAC. CELAC is the first organization, regional is uh, to gather all of the all of the countries and 
the CELAC, thanks to all of the efforts done by the president, is trying to have a position, an important position once again, in the sense, the role that uh, that the CARICOM could uh, have as part of, of CELAC. And let's recall that the, that the diplomatic lady be changed for for, uh, it was even said that it was time that the Carib a person from the Caribbean be the president of the assembly. And um, this, this could be the, we are going to debate about the re-election of Almagro, and this is something that, uh, that the Caribbean is doing. But of course, uh, every time they want to say something, you can find yourself with the U.S. and their subsidiaries. And uh, they have been able to construct a very dignified and honest elite that do not accept pressures from the powers. Thank you very much, Sergio, for being with us. and. Uh, and for other guests too, he was uh, via, via telephone to reflect on CARICOM. To both of you, thank you very much. Let's go to a pause and we'll be right back. But before we go, we would like you to participate with us. What are the geopolitical interests that the imperialism has in terms of the CARICOM countries? Is it in USA's uh, in interest, this blockage? At the, at the, at the hall, we, we could answer him and say that he has a small country and a huge voice. The states of the CARICOM are facing great challenges with the interference of imperialist governments. This is the line that we have been able to obtain in today's a critical move. The region of the Caribbean represents a geostrategic area that is relevant. It's an exchange place for commerce and for, for many centuries. The situation obviously creates interest in the imperialist powers. The United States tries to maintain their hegemony on the area, and they do several things. For example, the Don, or the Ron Ron Doctrine that um, that will justify any military intervention. The military intervention is directed by the Organization of American States. And to confront this panorama, CARICOM has closed their lines to reject the interference to, in their internal affairs and thus uh, taking over the control of the Caribbean countries. In the 31st uh, Assembly, the Prime Minister of Bar Bar Barbados, Mia Botley, reflected on the threats and diplomatic threats of the region. She, he said that nothing can disappear them from a big impact on us. That is correct, as I was saying. And, uh, well, we have uh, Angel Rafael Leal, and he's an investigator. He's a diplomat. He's a member of the Social Studies Institution, Jorge Rodriguez. He is member of the investigation that is investigating important affairs all through Latin America. Uh, doctor, you're also a connoisseur of the Caribbean. Well, yeah, because uh, we're neighbors. Of course, there's just a, the, just a coastal line divides us. Well, the Caribbean is made up of. 
When you think of a, in, a, in an election, you have to know that one vote is one vote. So the Caribbean has seen how important it is, especially being a, a one of those participants that would not excel as, be, as well. CARICOM is very important in a block when we negotiate together. So um, I think that the vote of the Caribbean is really important, and those who want to veto it have also understand the same thing. Uh, those who want to bring the old uh, food back, they would have to serve it and, uh, and go all again, all over. But let's recall that it was Chavez who brought light to the Caribbean. Mr. Monsalvo said, I can turn on the lights of my house because we don't know, we don't know how we're going to buy petroleum. He was a, this person who said was a very strong man, a very stern man. And uh, many of his colleagues in the CARICOM said that these, uh, these dates are not movable. And uh, when we were part of multilateral organisms, we can see that they are anti-imperialistic, anti-interference. They strive for non-interference and self-determination. They said that Chavez had bought the political will of their country, and that was totally the contrary. Those people have bought with love, with services, and, and of course, uh, without trying to impose anything on anybody, our political position is, uh, is great. So let's not forget that uh, the Caribbean will be also included in all of this. And, uh, okay, talking about tragedies that are cyclical and sometimes come, uh, every year there is at least one cy huge cyclone that destroys something in its path. And there's a congestion in uh, trying to guarantee the life of the people in the Caribbean. That is what the United States doesn't understand. They have never been able to understand, or maybe they don't want to understand. And uh, there have been attempts to destroy CARICOM. The last, the last uh, evidence that we saw was when President Obama went to CARICOM before he went to the OAS meeting. He was offering um, good prices on the oil so they would divide and uh, just regroup each other with smaller groups. Well, when you had to invade uh, now that you mentioned this line of thought, Doctor, how do you observe the culture of CARICOM in terms of this uh, group of Lima? They're like two poles that uh, find each other in the OAS. Well, the Lima Group is an invention that is used as a pretext to invade Venezuela, and it loses. I think that after the last, um, the last place of uh, place of of, uh, of power. Once the this political strategy of the so-called self-proclaimed president, uh, this group of Lima has no no objective anymore. They're very diminished as opposed to the compromise, the political will of President Maduro, who has been an example all throughout the world. Please uh, look over it. Well, um, speaking of this, I'm going to, I want you to 
I want to say something about Nicolás Maduro. And it's that President Maduro will go down in history as the only president that was uh, that has received a lawsuit on behalf of the most powerful president in the world, which is Donald Trump. Just last year, 50, 50 countries wanted to, to push over and uh, get out of the streets, this, uh, the preliminary acts. So the resistance of President Maduro has brought as a consequence that his that uh, his people uh, all like him. CARICOM has maintained firm to this project beyond Petro Caribe. And now we are prohibited to serve coffee to the CARICOM countries. And all of this should be in favor of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. This um, throws overboard this uh, sentence of. And the thing is that uh, the countries are not bought and sold. Of course, they think it is because, in their case, they do so. So, uh, in this case, is, uh, there is really no. There's no chance because the people are thankful. They have a brotherly sentiment. That's a relationship that transcends the the economic attention. So I think that if uh, Venezuela charged for every time that they have been so they have shown solidarity with one of their own. I think that um, it didn't work. So the truth is that there is a win-win interaction. I would say that there is a, a line of, of this aging wall, and the interests go beyond the, wall, the walls of this, of this place. Possibly it's because most of these people are Catholic. And with all of these differences that may exist, we still have a unity that is strategic. And by saying that we are Republic, that we are uh, Caribbean, we say that we are, uh, that we, we all can be from different countries, but the same region. Latin America has, another, uh, has a space like this. Uh, because we're different. We're not indigenous, we're not white, we're not black. We're something different, we're something of our own. Well, I want to thank you for, for sitting with us. Okay, back to um, Afro-descendant. I think it would be more offensive if you said colored people. Well, it's because they can change colors when they're hot, when they're mad. And um, speaking of, of generations that come from, uh, from the genes and the black genes, so a little bit to close the idea. When you see this level of organization in the countries of Latin America of this century, of this 21st century, there is something that is very interesting. And even with this, uh, with other presidents, we can say that our president has a great relationship. Well, we don't look anything like a Chilean person. And what we can say is none of none of these. We can we can agree on some statements. We can agree on having new relationships and uh, observing the geopolitical interests. 
Unity and diversity, that is one of the slogans that this political party has. Unity in and security. Well, this um this the this topic of multipolar i'm sure that it was in chavez or maduro who invented it but each time i hear it said by them i tremble i think it's the way we have to go we have to find a better world on where to on where to grow well, Walter Martinez says that all of these events are taking us to the 21st century, but very, very easy. Well, uh, next time we can analyze uh, what's going on in CARICOM and the organizations, what are they offering and how do they proceed. Well, doctor, as always, whenever you want to come back, you're totally welcome. Thank you very much. Let's go to conclusions. Dr. Tortolero already said, uh, small states, but with very high voices. They reiterate their calling to respect sovereignty, non-interference, to preserve peace, a peace that is constantly threatened because the, the imperialist governments uh, want to destroy CARICOM and be able to go against uh, Cuba, Venezuela, and other nations with nobody to defend them. But this will not happen because the members are totally aware of what it would imply to change any postures. And what they think is that only in the unity can these countries that are small geographically can be a barrier in front of the imperialism. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.